welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Leah Neal. Um, Lee, are you in New York right now? Uh, I'm in New York, yeah, Brooklyn. I'm back home with my parents. Okay. Um, kind of just like waiting for this quarantine to, <laughs> to pass, this yeah. pandemic to pass. <laughs> yeah. What, what is it like in New York? I mean, that's kind of, currently that's like the epicenter of, of COVID. What, have, have you been able to leave the house at all? What is, what has your quarantine been like? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy that New York d like does seem to be the epicenter. I mean, it is, I think it makes up like half of the cases in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, so after the Des Moines, uh, uh, meet the pro swim series meet I came back to New York because I had an event like later that week anyway so um is my inter internet connection okay like can you hear me and stuff it's a little laggy um but mm -hmm. I can hear you okay okay yeah I don't know how to what to do about that but I just want to let you know that it's part of my wi-fi okay um but yeah so after Des Moines came uh and just like made a trip of it stayed here for a week because I had an event later that week and then kind of during that like time like that timeline things started progressing with COVID-19 um and so they canceled or like they postponed the event so I already had my flight to go back to San Diego like mm -hmm. scheduled so I got on it um and went back to San Diego was there for like a few days we um had like two places that we we're swimming at one of them we lost the pool space and then the second one we lost lost the pool space like a few days later okay. um and we also had the Israeli national team training with us and um they were going home too and I was planning on like I was thinking about the possibility of going home because I figured that it would kind of progress uh, for the worst. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, booked a flight to leave uh, on the red eye, like on Wednesday or something and uh, to come back to New York. Cause I didn't want to be like stranded, like quarantining by myself in San Diego. Um, yeah. So I've been home in New York for like over a little over a week now. Okay. This is, is, do you feel like New York, can you tell it's under quarantine? Is there like, is it, is it kind of like a ghost town or is it kind of in the middle where you can tell something's up, but still people are still kind of moving around and everything? Um, yeah, I've been quarantining pretty hard because I'm with my parents and they're, a bit older so um if I were by myself I would like go on walks or just to, like get out of the house more times I've gone out were to go on grocery store runs like a couple times mm -hmm. um and yeah I think just in general they're on the street there are less people walking around um and then I've seen on like of other people's like documented like videos of like walking through the like empty streets of New York like empty Times Square like it's kind of funny so um like I know that like I know the extent of like how much is quarantining but like how much my family has been quarantined like seen it out there because like I'm one of those people who are staying inside <laughs> yeah and then but it's also lucky for us that we have a like pretty spacious backyard so like when the weather permits, um, I'll like spend time in the backyard outside around the house. Nice. So yeah. So how have you been spending your quarantine since you've been indoors all of the time? Oh, um, yeah, that was your original question, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, My, I had um, asked about. New I've York, just. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my routine hasn't changed very much, <laughs> to be honest. I think that just shows how much of an introvert I guess I am, or more so than I realized, or how I 
just am lazy when I'm not training. <laughs> like I just stay inside most of the time and do the usual like watch like shows and stuff and TikToks and I'm on my phone or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just been a lot of that. Like I brought home my DJ set with me um, from San Diego because I figured it would be like quite a while. So I was like, oh, maybe I can like actually start practicing DJing because I got it like a few months ago, but I've only used it like twice. Um, and uh, this is a perfect time for like editing YouTube videos as well. Um, so I've been doing that. It's just like, this thing is progressing so quickly that like my YouTube videos are like, so not up to date because I just come out with them like every like week, like, like once a week. Um, so it's like, uh, back to when we weren't quarantined, like back to when I was in San Diego, like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hold on. So I knew that you started a YouTube channel and I was going to ask you about that. So that's, this is the perfect time to do that. But also you want to start DJing too. I would like to hear <laughs> about that as well. <laughs> yeah. I've always made playlists like my whole life um I because I just am really particular about like whatever mood I'm in I want to listen to like a set list of like music or whatnot so I have like a bunch of playlists on Spotify um now and I figured I like I always like take over the ox <laughs> at like parties or like friends houses or whatever mm -hmm. um and I wanted to like actually learn how to like mix and like do transitions and stuff rather than just like doing us. That was like the extent of my DJing. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. I just need to like get into the, get into the like mood to do it. <laughs> Definitely. And yeah, tell me, so tell me about your YouTube channel that launched pretty recently, right? Um, uh, did you ask if I started it pretty recently? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have like four videos up, I think right now. So, okay. and I put them out once a week. So I started it four weeks ago. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just watching a lot of, or like I was watching like two or three vloggers like consistently and then kind of just figured I was like, Hey, like I want to um start a youtube channel because i feel i feel like a good example of like why i wanted to start it was because i feel like you don't really get to like know swimmers too much besides like when they get interviewed after a race and it's always like the same questions and the swimmer is always out of breath and you have to win <laughs> like it's not every swimmer that gets interviewed <laughs> um and it's just like a ve like a very one-sided portrayal of swimmers and I have people like ask me questions um from time to time on Instagram and uh there's some overlap so I don't know I just thought it'd be interesting to get them or to allow them to like see what I'm like outside of like the like one post I post on Instagram every once in a while or like through my stories it's it's just like such a like uh minor like scope of like what my life is like or what my personality is like um because I think like it's cool to like get to know these youtubers I watch like get to know like what they're thinking about like what they do so I was like maybe someone else can like um benefit from like seeing the same thing of mine um and then like in the very least it's like a nice way nice thing to look back on because I have a really bad memory um and like i love like looking back on photos and having videos um is even better i think yeah as as the person who pretty much solely interviews the winners of those races and asks the same <laughs> questions i very much appreciate what you're trying to do with that i think that's that awesome. wasn't any shade <laughs> no <laughs> i know um I, I i took it as quite the opposite you know i think I think showing showing more dimensions of it, of swimmers than just their swimming is uh, is really cool, and uh, I appreciate that you're doing that. <clears throat> um, that so do you feel yeah. like? And I feel like. Go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Oh 
like a like a question I got a lot or got a lot and like still get whenever it's like swimming related it's like who are your uh, role models growing up and I like never really had like a an answer ready for that because I don't like I didn't know <laughs> like why would I look up to someone if I don't <laughs> know what their personality is like like yeah they like I've always said Natalie Coughlin because like she seems like in those interviews in those like post-race interviews like very sweet like very intelligent like obviously like very accomplished very fast has like the most beautiful strokes and stuff but like beyond that like I didn't know not only her like I didn't know like of any anyone else like like people that you actually like want to know about like compared to like the Kardashians like why do we all know so much about them it's because they put it out there like whether you like it or not you know <laughs> yeah definitely hey dude I think swimming needs Kardashians yeah <laughs> the Duluths right <laughs> <laughs> no, we need that we need to make that reality <laughs> um well so so you've put out four videos now how do you think, you know, it's, it's obvious, that's still pretty new, but how do you think it's gone so far? Do you feel like you've gotten to, to show a little bit more of you than, than you normally would to others? Yeah, I think so. Um, I have some, whereas like, uh, the most recent ones, it was like me getting my hair done. Like, that's not something anyone would ever really see. Like, me uh like how our team like did a makeshift dry land circuit um workout when they closed the pools um um like me just like on a normal day hanging out with my friend like in new york um just like things that like uh in the past that i thought were pretty mundane things and like wouldn't think that anyone would really find interesting um i mean people yeah there are going to be people who don't but then there are also are going to be people who do so um like it's cool to like see their support like um in their comments like in their views and their subscriptions and uh also just like look back on these things like for myself too and like my friends like like seeing them as well um especially the friends I haven't seen in like a while like or since college or something so that they can be more updated on like what I'm doing day to day. Yeah. Have, so, I mean, something I've heard a lot of people talk about is like through this quarantine period and, you know, you're forced to stay home and you have a lot more free time than, than you might normally have. Have you found yourself reaching out to, to old friends or people you haven't talked to in a while? Yeah, I've, uh, definitely FaceTimed more than I usually do. Um, so I think that's like the, the paradox with this pandemic. It's kind of bringing everyone together and like um, really kind of forcing people to like be on each other's mind and like um, actually finally like check in with each other after saying like, oh, we should catch up. Like, well, like we should FaceTime sometime. But like now, like, you know, no one's anywhere but like in front of their computers or like but in the house so like <laughs> now you have like no excuse <laughs> uh, than to like actually check uh, check up on each other um which is good because uh it just like brings people together even though like we're all socially distancing ourselves yeah. physically socially distancing ourselves <laughs> right yeah like i know for me not 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 quite interacting with people but like those little habits that on a daily basis I'm like well I should do but like like I'm not gonna because I want to go to bed early it's like like flossing now I'm like dude you <laughs> have to floss every day because like you literally have nothing else to do like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you're so bored that you've resorted <laughs> to flossing <laughs> exactly like usually I would do it like every other day or, like a couple times a week and now it's like you might as well floss every day or wow that's really good <laughs> i only floss when i like, after i eat like corn or something <laughs> <laughs> that's i mean that's a good time to floss but have have you found yourself picking up habits out of boredom uh i've been doing a lot of cleaning in my parents house because <laughs> they just like accumulate a bunch of stuff and just like shove it wherever mm -hmm. there's space and like not really in an 
organizational manner. So I've been organizing and cleaning, um, like partly because like I want to help them, but like majorly because I can't, I can't stand looking at the disorganization. <laughs> I, I think that's funny because I feel like usually it's the opposite where like parents are cleaning up their kids spaces, but that, yeah. yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty funny that you have done the opposite for them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when my mom like has come out to visit me a few times in San Diego, she like helps me clean over there. Gotcha. So yeah, that's still, that's still accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Do your parents cook? You cook a lot? Have you or have you been cooking there? Um, uh, I'm not cooked since being home with my parents. <laughs> um, they've been cooking, yeah. The best part of quarantining <laughs> with your parents. Um, they've been cooking a lot. Like I've been just doing the grocery store runs, so they've been cooking everything. Um and yeah, like because of the quarantine, like because we don't we're physically not seeing like all the like restaurants and like uh just like eating out and stuff uh we've been cooking or like they've been cooking a lot um but i think when we start running low on groceries we'll start like uber eat eating or uber eats uh, <laughs> just ordering out i don't know stuff. how to make that into a verb <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice um have there been any highlight meals have they cooked like a best meal or something um, you really liked. My mom makes this uh, soy sauce, like kind of sweet salmon, um, like seared and like, doused in that sauce. It's so good. Like I try to make my version of it um, as well, but I don't know. It's just never as good as hers. So I like having that. Um, my dad has been, we have like so many potatoes and sweet potatoes. <laughs> My dad has been making um, potato salad a lot, <laughs> a lot. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah. Everything's pretty good. Yeah. As long as I'm not making it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, nice. From, so from an athletic standpoint, what have you thought about, I guess, mostly just being at home? for the last week and not having the opportunity to like go swim or even go outside to, to work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if the weather is like not as great, like if it's raining, cause it's like alternating like rainy, rainy and sunny days here in New York. Um, like I'll just work out in the living room. Um, but if it's nice, I'll go into the backyard and work mm -hmm. outside. Um, our, team like team elite has has been having these zoom like calls like zoom meetings uh where we work out together and do our usual like abs um like workout with our trainer pro fear so okay. that's been nice uh being able just to like see everyone um every other day um and then i tried out like one of those um because like a lot of gyms because they're closed they're like hosting like live stream uh workouts on instagram so i did one of those the other day and that was like surprisingly like really um like you really did get a good workout out of it um so yeah that was cool or just like or just like jump roping and like doing my own cardio oh do what do you have a, any thought or opinion on just not being in the water for this long um it's been like or how long has it been like a week and a half or two weeks usually um but like like in college like when I would come home for like Christmas or or whatever like after like the big meet of the summer um I'm usually like in that state in the same state that I am in now as I was then like when I come home I don't swim mm -hmm. so it's like not <laughs> very different uh, uh, so far but um we'll see how much longer this goes for <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah I mean I don't swim but I do a lot of like class pass stuff like I do a lot of cross training stuff um which gives me like a nice break from swimming because like if I like go long, long periods of time of like 
swimming, I tend to overthink my stroke and I just like lose my feel a bit. So it's a nice reset to just do other, uh, train in other ways, like train on dry land before going back to the pool. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, any closing thoughts? Um, I guess like some, like some advice to like the kids maybe watching or who are like a little bummed, more bummed <laughs> than I seem right now to not be able to swim. Um, just know that like this obviously is like a weird time, but it will pass soon and just like use this opportunity think of all the times that you like haven't wanted to go to practice or were too tired like <laughs> now you have the time to like rest up and like focus on things like recovery and nutrition and like your fitness outside of the pool so and in addition to like all the your physical health also like take this time to meditate and um, that's easier said than done. Cause like I haven't been meditating, but I know I should. <laughs> um, and just like really focus on bettering yourself as a person so that you could better yourself as an athlete and as a student. Um, it's kind of a interesting time because it's like a pause on life and, um, everything that usually goes on. So, um, just use, just really capitalize on this unique, um, like, uh, time. Man. Yeah, I think that says it all. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for your time, Leah. Yeah, thanks, Coleman. Stay safe. <laughs>